Good morning, Ohio Gozimasta. I love building things. And so one day when my friends and I were sitting around and had a little free time, we decided to make a few modifications to my car. my car. That was a 1970 BMW that I cut the roof off of, put fire cannons on, put a bunch of propane in, computer controlled. It was pretty cool. Um, a few more projects like that, and I landed my dream job. I got to host my very own TV show, uh, along with three other hosts on uh, Discovery Channel. And the premise of the show was, let's invent the future. Let's come up with some wild, crazy ideas, let's build them, and then let's test them. So that's what we did. We made trucks that lifted up over other cars so you could park more easily. We made 30,000 pound, 30 foot tall water slide simulators. We made giant pneumatic boxing robots. Kind of like that movie, Re uh, Real Steel, but the real deal. <laughs> we made six legged all terrain vehicles. And of course, we made paddles that you could climb up the side of a building, mimicking the cockroach. But then we moved on to work on projects that had a little more meaning things that really helped people. This was a, a personal airbag that you could wear, and if you were to fall from a height, it would inflate around you. I'm gonna show you a little behind the scenes footage if you don't mind. Three, two, one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very brave stunt man right there. Gotta love Tim. We made firefighting equipment. So this was a rig that could carry firefighting uh, gear upstairs. So one firefighter could do the work of five in carrying all this up the stairs. And then we made an autonomous drone that if you were out in the water and you got into trouble, you could push a little GPS beacon and the drone would automatically take off, fly to you, and deliver the life vest. <laughs> Joe's exact coordinates are fed into the autopilot system that only days ago sent the plane to ruin. And the autopilot delivers a flight plan to the plane as it soars above, sending it right to Joe's location. Practically right over my head. The drone automatically drops the inflatable life vest. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Just a few feet from an out of breath Joe, definitely within swimming distance. Swimming to it now, we have rescue. And definitely a working life-saving device. <laughs> so out of this, I decided something. That people helping people is cool. And so I decided, to, like, how do we take prototype this and extend it out into the world? And so I've created a nonprofit called Reallocate, where we bring people together from all walks, from engineering, from design, from business, and they work together in teams come up for solutions for people that don't have access to that sort of resource. We brought together partners from academia, from corporations, from societies that all work together to help with, this, with these causes. One of our projects, I went down to Nicaragua to develop a brace for treating kids with clubfoot. And my trip down to Nicaragua was, without a doubt, the most meaningful thing I've ever done in my life. Ben has just recently gone to Nepal to help build a water project. Joe, or H2O Joe, we call him, has gone to Africa and he's traveling around helping with water projects. And then uh, one of our advisors, he wrote an article called Predators for Peace by Ambassador Jack Chow. The notion is how do we repurpose these military devices to actually do some good in the world? And so this year at Burning Man, we tried to get our arms around some of this technology. And I actually have a TEDx Black Rock City talk, you can watch on that. So this is a little bit of my world in 3D. That's actually me in 3D. Um, and so today, I'd like to try to extend this to you and move into 4D. So the first D is for dirt. Well, I should probably be a little careful. I'm not going to really talk about dirt. I'm going to talk about soil. And I need to be careful because my brother is a, a soil scientist. And that's actually my brother there pointing at some dirt. Uh, <laughs> sorry, bro. Uh, so these are actually uh, desert crusts. And these are microbial communities that live in the desert. And they're interesting for a number of reasons. One, they've been around for a long time. Uh, they have fossils that date back 3.5 billion years. So these guys know how to survive. And that's because 
they are able to use these mechanisms where they all work together. I mean, they basically live in a, a constant state of natural disaster, or for them, it's dehydration. So one thing they do is they know, and it's important to rest, or to go into a dormant state. So they actually prepare themselves for when they can come out and flourish, for when the rains come. When the rains come, they flourish and they grow. And they grow by all working together, these thousands of different microbes, to create these communities. So that's my third D, which is diversity. By creating these diverse ecosystems, we can all work together to create systems where we all benefit. Now, this year in the United States, we had the largest by area natural disaster in our history. We had a drought. And our corn crops were decimated. And you look at this picture here, and you see the wilted corn on the right. But you notice something else. The grass is green. That's because the grass is able to survive in this. And this shows how fragile this centralized farming production is, how fragile this monocrop is. There's some other fragile systems that we have. Centralized power production is very fragile, as we all know, and also centralized manufacturing. And they, these things are fragile because it's taken away from us our ability to create for ourselves, and we rely on someone else. Reallocate recently did an education program where he brought at-risk high school girls into Tech Shop, a high-tech prototyping facility. And I, I was chatting with Sabrina here, and I asked her, Sabrina, before you came in here, where did you think things came from? She said, Walmart. And I said, okay, where do you think things come from now? She said, I want to make jewelry and start my own business making and selling jewelry. I said, that's great. So that's my fourth D, is do it yourself, or DIY, which apparently you have here in Japan. <laughs> and this is actually a movement. In California, we have something called the maker movement. Actually, it's a maker movement around the world now. It's not only in California, but there's also a maker fair in Africa. The maker fair in Africa is slightly different, though. Whereas in California, it's mostly hobbyists showing what they're doing. In Africa, these are actually people that are participating in an informal economy. And my friend Steve Daniels has a great TEDx talk that I encourage you to walk. But these are basically people that form communities. They all do something, they contribute, and the community does well. And so there's the girl creating her jewelry. But Sabrina doesn't have that informal community. So how can she tap in? How can she start her jewelry business? Well, fortunately, there are ways now through the internet. So she can share on Instructables, she can make her own store on Etsy, or she can start a company. She can crowdfund it with Indiegogo or Kickstarter. So her tools available to her. But can we take this a step further? Instead of just making jewelry where we look good, can we do something that not only benefits us through profit, but also benefits the people around us and the planet? And so this is a great example. This is from Maker Fair Africa. This is a solar-powered stoplight. So someone's making this so they can sell it, profit, they're doing it so they can help people by increasing safety, the stoplight, so people, and it's solar powered, so it helps the planet. And there are places you can go now to work with other people that are like-minded like this. There's clusters where social entrepreneurs get together called The Hub, and they're physical locations, and they're springing up all over the world. In fact, I have a little inside information that there's actually one coming to Tokyo very soon. There's also an online platform that's coming called Hilo, where you can build communities online, and then you can develop products and solutions and then fund them as well. So let's all take a look at dirt, or desert crust. Sorry, brother. They've been around for a long time, so they've learned to survive. And it's all right to take a nap every once in a while, rest, and so you can prepare. But then we can all work together through diverse skill sets to create an ecosystem that's strong and resilient. So, and that includes doing it yourself. That's that self-reliance that's so important. You can help the people around you, you can make some profit, and you can save the planet. So, as the new day breaks, let's all wake up. Let's do what we're passionate about. And we can build communities that are strong, full of love, and resilient. Thank you.